so bright in the inner cities, God, that people's eyes would be opened, God, that people's ears would be open, that the spirit of distraction would be bound up in Jesus' name, that the gospel would go forth, God, that your gospel would pierce and penetrate people's hearts, God, and just turn their coldness, God, into just like soft flesh, God, that their hearts would be changed, God, their hearts would be changed, they would be saved, God, and you would just raise up those leaders, God, what, however it looks like, God, that you would do it, Lord, that you would raise up leaders, God, and raise up your bride, raise up your church, God, your sons and daughters in the inner cities, God, to just start this movement, Lord, and we just pray that every Christian um, God would be awakened, God would be set aflame, God, for more, the more that you have for us, God, that we would be more set on fire, that yes. we would will carry your heart, Lord, and, and just see your desire and the partnership that we have with you, God, in it, Lord. So awaken us, God, awaken me, God, awaken us more, Lord. Thank you, God, that you tell us to ask for the nations, God. And we just want to have that same heart as you, Jesus. So we just thank you, God, and we receive it, Lord. And we know that you're doing something even right now, God, in the heavenly realms, God. Yes. So thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. Lord, and I pray for the messengers in these nations. Yes. I ask you, Lord, uh, I just speak Acts 10, 38, in the same manner that you anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power to do good and to heal all that were oppressed by the devil because you're with them, Lord. I ask you to fulfill that word in your messengers across the nations, in Singapore, in China, in, in the United Kingdom, Lord, in Africa. Pour out your spirit on all flesh. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cast out demons and cleanse those who have leprosy. In Jesus' name, let your gospel go forth with miracles, signs, and wonders. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I feel like we're still not quite done. We need to keep praying in line with what was just prayed. Revivals are run by revivalists. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And to some extent, that's all of us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You are a revivalist. But I, I feel like there's some even here in our own body who you know this is your call. It's unique to you. It's There's a general call of that on the church, but there's a unique call to you, Jory. I want you to just lift your hand as a first fruit. Jory is a revivalist yeah. in the inner city. Come if on. that's you, I don't want you to be shy about it. I want you to stand up and just lift your hand and say, okay, I think this Come is on. me. You don't even have to be walking in it, right. but you have to know that this is on your life. Yeah. Amen. And we're going to start praying for you right here. There's Olivia in the back. Jory, Olivia, who else? Don't be shy about this. This is not pride. This is a calling. Chris Bright, is that a hand? A reluctant hand? Put it up. Put it up. Chris yeah. Bright, who else here? If you're saying, this is me. Christina in the back. I mean. I, we're going to pray for this. Yeah. Revivals are run by revivalists. Jasmine, yeah. just put your hands on these few who are standing. Just kind of yeah. get around them. Deborah uh, Nyberg, are you raising your hand or are you praying with big hands? Both. Okay, then raise your hands straight up. Put your hands on Deborah Nyberg. And let's just begin to pray for these ones with Isaac. Father, we, we just say we believe your truth. That you don't have to be famous to be a revivalist. You have to be a revivalist to be a revivalist. So God, we stir up the gifting. We stir up the compelling that are on these lives. We stir up the calling. The dreams of your heart that are on these lives right now. God, we say more dreams, more dreams, more dreams, more dreams. More vision in Jesus' name. More open doors. More hemming in. I just thank you, God, for the hemming in that you do. You shut doors. To, to, to make our lives small enough so that you can declare truth to us. Father, I say more hemming in and more open doors, more power, more anointing, more compelling on these lives in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I just speak the rushing in of your life over these lives. I speak consecration over you unto the purpose of God. Consecration over you unto the purpose of God. We speak to fear now. And come on, just believe this with us. Speak against fear. Speak against all those, those uh, 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 naysaying voices that come against the calling on these lives. Just declare truth over these who are here. Just I'm going to give you a few minutes to pray. I'm talking too loud. You talk. Raise your voice. Pray for the revivalists in our own company of people. Come on. Believe, believe, believe. Send them, send them, send them with the force of your prayers. 
you're heard, your prayers are effective. Declare truth. Come on, stir yourself up. Stir yourself up. Prophesy, the word says, according to your faith. Prophesy according to your faith. Declare truth. Declare truth and open doors in the nations. Declare it. Father, we thank you for the revivalists that you've put into this body, and we don't take that lightly. We honor. We honor what you've done in our own midst. We honor the word, the nameless, faceless. The nameless, faceless. Father, I say more. More anointing on these. More anointing on these. More anointing on these. More fire on these. Jonathan, are you, are you sure you're not supposed to be standing up? More anointing on these. Stand up, man. Stand up. Victor, let hands up. More anointing on these. More anointing on these, God. More fire, more fire, more fire, more fire. We say bring in more fire brands into resound. Bring in more fiery arrows, singing arrows, God, not so we can hoard them, but so we can send them out to the nations and to the neighborhoods and the inner cities and the, and the places in the U.S. and the places outside the U.S., God, more singing arrows. Tommy Hayes, just declare singing arrows. You're going to India in Jesus' name. We just declare truth over us as a community. We're not going to... We're not going to gather more to contain more. We'll gather more to send out more, to pour out more. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. More, Lord. The Lord doesn't forget one prayer that we pray and one dream that he gives. He doesn't forget. Amen? And so we can't forget. It's what he commands us to do. Remind me. Remind me of those things. Remind me. Bring to remembrance those things that I'm going to do in your life. He wants us to be witnesses of what he does. Amen. We don't have to perform the word. We just need to be witnesses of what he's doing in our lives. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Nothing like having an altar call before the message. Woo. Hallelujah. We value you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This is a safe place for you, to, for you to step out and do things you've never done before. We don't expect that you're going to know how to do it. We like when you don't know how to do it. Yeah? Yeah. We like when you don't know how to do it. I like when I see you step out and you're scared. That's a win for me. I say, wow, we're doing everything good here. We're doing everything right. If we can convince you that we're cheering you on even when you don't know what you're doing. Praise yeah. God. That's what church is supposed to be. Yeah. The disciples did not know how to do the things Jesus was commanding them to do. Right? Amen. He'd say, you go feed those 5,000 people. Come on. What? Yeah. What? You want me to feed the 5,000 people? That's your gig. Yeah. You go feed the 5,000 people. You go cast a demon out. Yes? Yeah. This yeah. is what it is to be discipled by Jesus. Jesus is always sending out his disciples to do stuff they've never done. So if you haven't done anything that you're not good at in a while, you're not being discipled currently by Jesus. Jesus is the sender. Yeah. Amen? Right. He's the pusher. Yes? yes? Not the druggy sort of way. <laughs> and the coach sort of way. He's, he's the one pushing us out of the nest, pushing us out of the boat, pushing us out of all that we know into the unknown. Why? Because it's in the unknown we reach for him in a way that we never reach for him in the known. Because we've learned how to not need him in the known. 
Yes? Yeah. Why do we need to be having adventures in God? Because if we're not having adventures in God, then you're not really in God. Whoa, this is the truth. Yeah. The church needs to be more adventurous. I can't stand that sometimes everything we do is so predictable. It needs to be unpredictable. Amen. It needs to be an adventure. It needs to, if this goes bad, it's going to be terrible. Those kinds of moments are God moments. Yeah. Amen. Right? Amen. When you're stepping out to pre, oh, this could be really bad. Yes! And we're in a God moment. Yeah. That thing that opens up, that moment of terror is called the beginning of faith. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. That's right. We need this. Yeah. Come on, I cannot preach this message Come to on. a somber, Come on. bored crowd. <laughs> I need you to rowdy yourself up. You cannot preach a message yeah. called Ask for the Nations and everyone's just deadpan. Yeah. This is about the biggest thing I could preach to you. It's ridiculous. Hey guys, hey little gathering of people, instead of praying that all of your seats are filled, which is a nice prayer, and a doable prayer, if we all reached out to two or three, we could actually accomplish that. We don't even need God, just invite two or three. Yeah, uh, yeah that's wonderful. You can do that. I'd like you to ask for nations. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's ridiculous right. what I'm right. talking to you about. You have Come to on. have a heart disposition in, a, in that place. Or this will just not hit you in the right way. Right. And it needs to land rightly. Because this is not just a corporate call. This is a personal call for you to step out into audacious faith, which is the only kind of faith there is. Amen. Amen. Faith is either audacious or it is nothing at all. Preach. Amen? Amen? If you're not feeling slightly terrified on a regular basis... And you are not living in faith. I don't care. I don't care what little Christian verse you preach. You are not living that. Come on, come on. Living it is terrifying, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Living faith means you could sink. If Jesus doesn't uphold, you could sink. That's living faith, friends. That's right. And the thing is, is you know you want this, yeah. but you know you're going to have to give something up. Yeah. Your boredom. Right. You're going to have to give up your boredom to say yes to the adventure that God has for you. Yeah. And I know you'll never be happier than when you do. Right. That's right. That's right. It'll be rough. It'll be ugly. But it'll be awesome. Amen. Amen? Amen? That's right. So if you have notes, pull out your notes, and let's get this show on the road. Amen? Amen. You have a purpose. You are uniquely Fashions. There is nothing about you that was not planned by God. Amen. Do you believe that? Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says not only are all of your hairs numbered, each one of them has a number. Yeah. Everything about you is known. Everything about you is planned. All of the intricacies, all that you are is known and planned. Amen? You are not forsaken. You are not forgotten. You are not abandoned. You are known. That's the truth. Amen. That's, That's right. the truth. That's right. Amen? The Lord knows perfectly well how he fashioned you. The way that he made you. He knows. He knows you. He knows the desires of your heart. His calling towards us is very personal. It's not one size fits all. Right. Amen. Amen? Amen? It's personal. It's fitted for you. His call is distinct for you. He's not a goof father, as my notes say. He's a good father. He's not a goof father. He's a good father. He's the good shepherd. He's a good coach. He knows exactly where to fit us to pull out what he desires to pull out in us. He knows where and how to direct us. Nothing he does is arbitrary. Nothing is just to buy time until next year. God doesn't have that kind of, of a plan. Well, just put them on the shelf, let them rust there, gather some dust, and about 23 years, we're gonna pull her off, she'll be needed then, about 23 years. Yeah. That's just not how God works. Come on. Amen? You may not be on the front line for all 23 years, but even when you're on the back side of nowhere, God is doing something. Amen? Amen. Nothing is just to buy time in God. Amen. It's all unto his purpose, and it's all unto his glory. I found a couple new definitions for mandates, and it's why we're doing this series. Listen to this. To give someone <clears throat> mandates from heaven, mandates from God, to give someone the authority to do something. 
That's what a mandate is. To give an official order to make a law stating that something must be done. Here's this definition. A written authorization enabling someone to carry out transactions on another's bank account. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> People say, why don't you spend more time praying over our personal needs? I'll tell you why, because I believe Jesus. If you'll set your eyes on the kingdom, I already know all the things you need. Yeah. All that stuff's going to be added to you. You don't need to spend your life fretting over what is or isn't in your bank account. Set your eyes on the kingdom. Yeah. Set, why do we just pray here? I know what you need. I know that many of you are need a job. Guess what? Let's pray for the nations and pray for the kingdom, and all these things will be added to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's not either or. Well, Amen. it is, but it's Jesus. Amen. The other stuff's got to go. Yeah. My fretting prayers have to go. I need to come up to his prayer life and trust he's going to answer all of the needs that I have. And I could spend my whole hour worried about that. Or I could just give myself to the kingdom, like he said, and trust that he's going to do the rest. And we're going to do that. Amen. Amen. Right. Let's talk about Jesus' invitation towards us to pray these kinds of prayers. I put them all together in a row because sometimes when you hear the truth... Coming at you from all sides with no commentary, it does something. Yeah? It does something in us. To just hear it like a BB fire. Well, what's a, a machine gun? A fire. A truth machine gun. Yes? Listen to these next set of verses and ask yourself, can I believe this? Okay? Here they are. All of these are said by Jesus and his disciples. They're all from the New Testament. Here we go. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Do you believe that? That's good. Yeah. Do you? Do you? Better grab the person's hand next to you. If you believe this, what is your prayer life? Let's read it again. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything, anything they ask, it will be done by the, for them by my Father in heaven. Do you believe that? Yeah. It's going to get better. Yeah. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Come on. Yeah. Do you believe that? Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Larry does. Yeah. <laughs> whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father yeah. may be glorified in the Son. How about that one? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Yeah. How about that one? It's <laughs> good one. It's a good one. Yeah. You did not choose me, but I chose you yeah. and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should abide. So that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Amen. Who initiated this relationship? Jesus. Jesus. Who declares that you will be fruitful? Jesus. Jesus. Who declares that you, your fruit will remain? Jesus. In that day, <clears throat> you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you've asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. Yeah. How about that one? Yeah. If any of you lacks wisdom... Let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. 
But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts it is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. That one's got a little more direction, doesn't it? Ask and don't doubt. <clears throat> every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments, and we do what pleases him. What about this one? And this is the confidence that we have towards him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. Yeah. Friends, this is the truth. I don't care all the situational stuff that's going on. I mean, I care because I love you, but ultimately that is not bigger to me than what I see in this text. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Christianity is about the reality of heaven breaking in upon your life. It's that you are here and you are there. You are here and you are there. You are here and you are there. And ultimately, we are living reconciled lives with heaven and earth. That is our day-to-day -day life. Amen? What is there is here. What is here is there. We are reconciled in Christ. Amen? We are heard. We are loved. We are invited into asking and receiving. What could be better than this? This is good news. This is good news. Well, I'm just not sure I really, you know, get the whole prayer ministry thing. Friend, what? Did you just read this text? Whatever you ask me to do, I'm going to do it. But you've got to ask me. Yeah. There's another scripture that says you have not because you ask not. Venting to your buddy is not directing your request to God. Come on. Come on. I've learned that yeah. myself. Over many years yeah. of venting to my buddy and not seeing any breakthrough, right? Guess what the exodus was all about? Uh, right. It said God had to teach a people to stop directing their cry to Pharaoh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. That's so good. Stop asking Pharaoh. Stop asking the government. Stop asking whatever it is. You're looking, your boss is not your source. I'm your source, says the Lord. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. you got to stop directing your cry to the wrong thing. Right. Begin to direct your cry to the one who loves you and hears you yes. and has promised to answer you. Yes. He's promised to answer you. Yes. Friends, he has promised to answer you. What are you afraid of? The answer? He's promised. He's bound himself by himself to answer. He loves you. Amen? This is good news and nothing but good news. Amen? amen. Yes, amen. If he promises, he'll answer. Amen? Yes. Let me tell you something. God is not honored by vicarious living. Yeah. Well, praise God that you answered little Joey's prayer over there. Praise God. That was a wonderful answer for Joey. Thank you for loving Joey so dearly. Oh, sure, it's because he's so nice. Oh, oh. I just thank you for Joey's answered prayer. God wants you to have an answered prayer. Right. He wants you to come into an answered prayer life. Yeah. Amen? Sure. He is an adventure for you. And it's in the adventure of asking and receiving that we find God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Venting is not the adventure. Asking is the adventure. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> John 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I came that they have life and have it abundantly. Friends, it's time for each and every one of us to come into the abundant life that God promised us. Amen? Amen? Sure. It's time. There, is, there should be no such thing as survival mode Christianity. Come on, no. come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to glory. Yes. Adventure to adventure. Yes? yes? yes. Yeah. Looks different in every season for everyone. We've got to be looking for this answered prayer of Jesus in our own lives. 
Amen? Let's talk about stadium Christianity, which is a corporate word for us and a corporate word for resound, and then I'm going to bring it back to you. This audacious heart cry in you that God longs to answer for you. Amen? We have an incredible prophetic history with resound in regards to stadium Christianity and the house of prayer and how we heard that word and you started to hear a little bit of that on the Ask for the Nations promo, which is that one day I was driving, uh, uh, this is kind of even mid-story, but it's where I'm going to pick up, driving towards the citrus, to, uh, past the Citrus Bowl to where Resound was meeting as a house of prayer and as a school of ministry, and I heard the audible and scary voice of the Lord, I might add, call out, Leah, fill the bowls! And I'll pour them out. He didn't sound quite like Lou Engel, although it, that just did. Just sounded like a directive. And it terrified me. I knew exactly what he meant. I was passing the stadium on that road. I for, always forget the John Lynn Parkway. It kind of looked like at the time, like you were almost looking down into the bowl just a bit. And I just felt almost sick to my stomach by what I knew the Lord was calling me to. And I can tell you very plainly, I had had no desire or thoughts that one day I would be a stadium Christianity kind of person. That was nowhere on my horizon word. It's not like somebody had come to me and prophesied that and called me out of a crowd. You there in the back, you're going to be doing stadium Christianity at some point. None of that had happened. I was just little old me trying to run a little house of prayer and a little school of ministry and trying to not get fired. I mean, that's basically what my life was. I was just, just, just a normal person doing ministry, just a normal Christian trying to be faithful with what was in front of me. And then the audible voice of the Lord apprehended my life. And I've never been the same. Terrified, I continued driving to work, got out of my car, came into the service, and there the, the school of ministry was singing the verses. And I put them here in Revelation 5, right here. They were singing these scriptures back as I walked into that prayer gathering. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing, standing as though it had been slain with seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he went back and he took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seals for you were slain. And by your blood, you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priest to our God and they shall reign on the earth. There's only one person who's who's given their life, their blood for you, and it's Jesus. Yeah. There's only one man who's paid the ultimate price of his own life to ransom nations, and it's Jesus. And I came into this little prayer gathering, and the singers were singing, and I said, oh God, maybe the bowls you're talking about, Leah, fill the bowls. It has to do with this scripture. Fill the bowls that are being held in heaven. Fill the bowls with prayers of the saints. And I can answer that because nobody can measure that. I can't even measure that. And I can say yes to that because that has no measurement. So I'm not, I'm not scared really to say yes to this. Right? And I told the Lord, God, I'll say yes to this prayer. I'll say yes to this invitation. I'll fill the bowls of heaven with the prayers of the saints. God, anoint me to raise up a prayer movement in such a way that the bowls of heaven, that the bowls of heaven would be filled and poured out over the earth. Listen, friends, it's not either or. It's both and. Yes. It's both and. This call is just as much about the bowls of heaven as it is stadiums. Yes. It's the bowls of heaven and the bowls of earth. Amen? Amen. Fill the bowls. I came home that night. I didn't share that word with anyone. I came home that night, and when I walked in, Larry had the news on, and the news was reporting a story about the East Coast stadiums, that the East Coast bowls were being refurbished, that all this money was being put into the East Coast stadiums, and uh, hotels were being built up, and restaurants and services were all being built up around the East Coast stadiums. And when I heard that, I, I just, again, it was like, oh no, this isn't just spiritual. This is practical. And I felt sick all over again. I felt terrified all over. I said, well, I'm not preaching what I'm preaching to you because I want to see you terrified. I know what it is to step out in faith and terror is part of it. Yeah. Amen? 
And because I want to see you call, called out onto the waters of your calling, I'm willing to be transparent about both sides of this. It's not just glorious. It's terrifying. Amen? And that emotion rises up. Oh, my gosh. You're going to call me to do this? I can, I'm going to fail. God, I, don't, I know 10 people. Fill a bowl. You're crazy. All of those emotions were rising up as I'm listening to this story on the East Coast stadiums. I'll tell you the truth. After I heard that newscast, I had people coming up to me wherever I'd go at any prayer meeting I was leading and say, God says you're like a, a, a rod of iron. You're going to stretch out on the East Coast. You're going to stretch out on the East Coast. It's going to strike the East Coast. You're like a rod of iron. I mean, again and again, I'd get that word, and I knew it was in relation to this story that was being told on the news when I walked in. See, God has a way of highlighting to us, but first he's got to do it on the inside. Getting a prophetic word externally that you don't have internally, you cannot walk that out. Right. Amen? Right. Some people say, well, no one's told me I'm a revivalist. Who cares? Stand up. Has God told you you're a revivalist? Stand up. The confirmation will come. Don't, don't let confirmation, don't let that external thing be your guide. Let the voice of the Lord be your guide. Is this making sense? I hope this is making sense. Yes. I went into my room terrified. Didn't even talk to, to Larry. He was in the kitchen. Just went straight to my room. I began to cry. God, I don't know how to do this. I feel absolutely that this is you. I feel, but I, feel, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to say yes. It's too big for me to even say yes to. What would it mean for me to say yes? How do I say yes? How do I begin to operate in this? And I just began to cry out to the Lord. All of these fear, all this fear started to come out in my prayer time with the Lord. And in that process, the Lord began to just, just say yes to me, Leah. Just say yes. Just agree with me. Just agree with what I'm saying over your life. And that was hard. Saying yes to the things God is calling you into. Guess what? It requires faith that you don't quite have. Yeah. That's every story in the Bible. That's right. Do you know why those stories are there? So that when it happens to you, you don't disqualify yourself. Gideon. Oh, if this is really you, then da 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 Peter, if this is you, call me to come out on the water. Why, why are they saying that? Because they were terrified. These stories are embedded in these scriptures, not so that we think they're awesome, but so we recognize in their weakness, even as they said, yes, God performed the word. Amen. Not Gideon, right. not David, right. not Peter. God sustains. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he will sustain you. Amen. That's the good news. Yeah. I began to give myself, consecrate myself to what I heard the Lord say. And then for some reason, I opened up my computer and I Googled. I do not know why I did this, but I just Googled stadium vision. It's like almost 10 years ago now. Stadium vision. And the first thing, the number one thing that came up, doesn't come up now. I tried it last night. What if you just put stadium vision? What comes up? But 10 years ago, when you put that into the search, the thing that came up, the first thing, vision by Paul Kane about stadium Christianity. I said, oh no, I don't even want to click the link. I mean, what? Paul Kane, for those of you who don't know, uh, he's gone through some trouble in recent years, but he's a prophet, and he's the scary kind of prophet who says uh, stuff like, uh, I'm going to come to your city, the Lord told me to come to your city, and um, when I come to confirm the words that are going to be spoken there, there's going to be an earthquake on that day. What day would you like me to come? Yeah. He's that kind of a scary yeah. kind of guy. Real accurate in some of those things. And so I knew who he was, and I clicked the link, and we're going to listen to it. I know some of you have heard this, and some of you this will be your first time, but I want you to hear this vision that he has. What if God poured out of heaven some kind of a great outpouring and his sovereignty and righteousness and justice and love and his eternal life and omniscience and omnipotence and omnipresence and immutability and veracity just jumped all over you. I tell you, it blow you up. But he's going to do that, and when he does, you're going to have more than just a little omnipotent surge. You're going to have something more than something to knock out the cameras and knock out the phone lines and knock out all the power lines and set off the fire alarms like it did in Kansas City or Old Lake, Kansas, and a little bit of that happened here. You're going to have something more than that. You're going to have to have some, 
you're going to have to have something more, and it's going to happen. You're going to see the glory of God come, and you're going to behold that glory and become that glory. And then others will come in, behold that glory and become that glory. Just like in times past when God would move, people would come into the old Methodist meetings, and they'd come into the, the uh, John Wesley meetings and the Reformation days, and they'd behold the Savior and become the saved, and they'd behold the blessed Redeemer and become the redeemed. And, and uh, then, you know, finally, a wild group came along and introduced something uh, deeper, and Azusa Street uh, was instituted, and, and people went there, and they beheld the baptizer and became the baptized, and then they beheld the healer and became the healed, and then all of a sudden, God has saved the best for the last. People are going to come in. You know, that's the way this thing was birthed. The Jesus people came in because they beheld a Savior and became the saved. Redeemer became the redeemed. But let me tell you what's going to happen now. If I could grow by 50 and 60 and 100,000 at a whack, what on earth will happen when a thousand come in here each night and behold the glory of God and become the glory of God, go away and show forth His glory and in His express image? How, what on earth would happen if a thousand more comes and they get that? Look out, California, there's something greater than a tidal wave. There's something greater than a gigantic, charismatic earthquake coming. God will shake the earth once more, and His glory is about to be revealed in His people, and you will live to see it. Some of you sitting here tonight, there was a little English lad that ran out to me the other day, 19 years old out here, and he says, will I live to see this? Will I be in it? Will I be in it? And I thought, my Lord, that's my cry. Will I live? I want to live. I want to be in it. So, oh God, if you're going to pull off something this magnificent, and this great, surely you wouldn't take me off to heaven right now. That's foreign to me. I want to stay here. I want to see your glory. I want to see this come to pass. I want to be the first to stand and say, I told you so. I want to be the first to stand here and say, I really do. I mean, I want to be the first. I want to be the first to stand up here and say, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you in this great wedding ceremony tonight, something like the Supper of the Lamb of God. I want to introduce to you the new, the new Mr. and Mrs. John Wimber. Sons and daughters of God are going to be introduced in this meeting. The power of God, I want to introduce you, the new move of God. I'd like to say, this is it. I tell you, we, we, we always say, we've got it, we've got it, we've got it. And, and uh, we, we always say silly things like, well, if this isn't it, I'll keep this. I'll keep it until that comes along. If this isn't that, I'll keep this. Listen, friends, forget the nonsense. Something's going to come uh, so strong to you that you won't even know that there be any baptism of the Holy Ghost compared to the enormous baptism you're about to receive. I tell you, that cloud is coming. That cloud is coming. Just as you thought it was leaving you, it was just passing through you. It was just baptizing you. It was going to be your rear guard. It was going to drown your enemies. It was going to overcome Pharaoh. It was going to kill your Philistines for you. It was going to do all of the wicked army in. Listen, the cloud has moved to the back of us, but it's there. Glory to God. He's about to reveal himself and open a mighty red sea. We are about to go across and we're about to be led into something that can't stop ever again. No maligning will stop this. The news media can't stop it. All of the whorehouses and all of the whores and prostitutes and harlots in America cannot defame or defraud any of these men of God, for they will be the faceless generation of men who will stand on a platform with thousands and multitudes and masses all about, and the news media, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, and even HBO, the Hobo Channel, and everybody else will be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, we have no news tonight to report the good news. The whole world is going mad over Jesus. They're falling on their face and saying, Jesus is Lord. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And, all, and all this is happening tonight simultaneously with this broadcasting and there is no sporting news, there's no sports reports, there's no sports uh, news tonight because all the football stadiums and all the ballparks and all the coliseums are filled overflowing with thousands gathering, hearses and ambulances are lined up for city blocks. And there are hospital gurneys and, and people from the hospital morgues laying on these hospital gurneys. And the people are laying on hundreds and thousands of cots and stretchers. And they're there in the wheelchair section and the cripple section. 
body is twisted, mangled, and God is doing something. They are yelling over the loudspeaker system. We have a resurrection over here. And all the audience is glorifying God and worshiping the Lord God and His Christ. And I want you to know it's going to happen. You can uh, say it's not going to happen, but I'll ask God to let me live just so I can chide you until you can't be chided. I just want to rebuke you. I want to rebuke your unbelief because it will happen. Yeah. Glory to God. You know, the beauty of this is, and I can't stress this enough, now we're talking about God in this meeting confirming something. He's proving something real and genuine. And he's giving evidences. And he's establishing something, stamping his approval on it. But all of these mighty signs and miraculous happenings. And they're saying we have a resurrection over here. And then twisted mangled bodies are being made straight. And then the news announcers um, are saying, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we don't know who these people are. They're almost faceless. They've been standing on these platforms around the world without change of raiment, without food for three days, and they're still, uh, they're not exhausted. I mean, they're still at it. They're firing away, and they're speaking great wisdom, and they're speaking things that are bringing about resurrections and bringing about healings. And I want you to know it will happen, my friends. And the church of the Lord Jesus Christ will once again become the first line of defense. She'll be the only cure for AIDS. She'll be the only cure for communicable diseases that medical science will never be able to heal in those days. It'll be just like it was in those pre-war days when there was no cure for polio. There was no real vaccine for anything like that. There were cripplers there. There were killers there. But let me tell you, I had prophesied 28 years ago right here in Los Angeles, California, that there would come a plague on America. It would be a communicable, it would be a uh, contagion-type cancer that would be, uh, that would be uh, taken on and caught just like any other communicable disease, and men's hearts would fail them for fear of this type of cancer. We have that recorded on magnetic tape some 28 years ago, and they laughed me to scorn, but I want you to know we have the beginnings of a virus, we have the beginnings of a plague that will reach a third strain that man our beast will not be immune to, and God only knows what the medical profession will do. I see some of them jumping out the window in hopelessness and despair, men parts failing them for fear of these things that will come upon them. But not so, and with the church of God, they're going to be a light on a hill. They're going to be a light that can't be hid. They're going to be, not the general hospital, but they're going to be the hospital. They're going to be the healers. They're going to be the mighty feared champions. And they who are, who are so prideful will have to bend and bow and say, yes, Lord. Jesus is Lord. He's our only hope. And this will surely come to pass. Glory to God. I think that's kind of worth living for, isn't it? And so the... He had that vision while driving through Florida in 1989. And he released it in Florida and then he released it in Anaheim. And Lou Engel and I go back and forth about this particular word quite a bit. Um, I sent this word to CFAM, and CFAM had already named the gospel crusade that we had in Orlando the Good News Crusade. I don't know if you caught that. Nothing but good news, folks. The CFAM was lit up on fire from this word from 1989, yeah. realizing that we're all walking in it, just our little piece. We're walking in it. Yeah. But I want you to hear, this is the word that I heard 10 years ago. And I've been caught up in this word ever since. Last night, I wrote Paul Cain and said, I've never met you. I don't know who you are, but your word has gripped my life and I'm still carrying it. And this, I want to make an introduction with you about how we're walking this out. We have not seen what this word is, which is nameless and faceless. Who's running this show? Nobody knows. That was the report on the news. Yeah. 
Friends, we haven't seen this yet. We haven't seen this yet, but we're going to see this. Amen? It's the report I just told you from the other country. I can't even remember the country now. The one day, one nation, whatever that was. It, it was a one man running it. It was a one woman running it. It was about a nameless. It was about the church rising up into place and beginning to contend and, and welcome Jesus into the region. Not for the sake of building their ministry, but for the sake of Jesus. Because he deserves the full reward of his sufferings. Friends, this is a different motive and a different kind of thing that we're talking about and a different prophetic word. Amen? And we're walking it. Years ago, when we heard this, we had no idea how to step out in this. And my faith was about this big, incrementally coming up in God. And so we decided we're going to do a tour of all of Florida, go to every stadium in Florida, begin to contend and ask God, give us the stadiums of Florida for stadium Christianity and for this word. And I was going back on our Facebook page and looking at Kendall's photos and, and uh, Xavier's photos. There's a funny video, actually, of these guys, Jory's video of them in the bus being ridiculous as we tour and come up into these stadium gatherings. And every single night of that week, we were in a different city in a different stadium contending for this word to come to pass. Yeah. That was years ago. You know, again and again, we're just taking steps Agreeing with the word, steps into the things, into the calling that God has for us. And I want you to see that that's okay. Amen. When God begins to call you as whatever it is, this is for you. you there's no way you're just going to step into that prepared and equipped tomorrow. It's not how it works. He calls you and you step out into the thing that he calls you in, in diligence and faithfulness and baby steps. And then bam, he opens the door. But it's in diligence and faithfulness and baby steps. And bam, he opens the door. And diligence and faithfulness and obedience. And bam, he opens the door. It's not just he opens the door, he opens the door. And, it, and, and you just do whatever. You have to be equipped. You have to be equipped. You're saying yes day after day and all of the mundane things that nobody sees, nobody will ever see. But he sees those little movements of your heart that you're saying yes again and again and again. And you're saying yes when it's scary. And you're saying yes when no one sees. And you're saying yes when you're not sure, but you keep saying yes. Do you see this? This is audacious faith. And it's the faith recorded for us in the scriptures it's the faith passed down to us from the apostles. It's the prophetic word that's bigger than any of us. But we say yes. And the mundane things, and the small things, and the hidden things, we say yes. And in those hidden things, it all amounts to a fulfillment that only God can do. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Isaiah 42. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that fills it. The coastlands and their inhabitants. The Lord goes out like a mighty man, like a man of war. He stirs up his zeal. He cries out. He shouts aloud. He shows himself mighty against his foes. For a long time, I've held my peace and I've kept still and I've restrained myself. But now I'm going to cry out like a woman in labor. I'm going to gasp and pant. And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know in past they have not known. I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them. Amen. Amen. All of the things prophesied in that word in 1989 will come to pass. Amen. Amen. Right. There's talk of even next year having the stadium in Orlando for a gathering. Step at a time, one 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 little step at a time. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Can't be pushed back just because we don't know. What is it that God's called you to do? Come on. Stadiums, it's ridiculous. I'm telling you my ridiculous thing so that you're not afraid to say your ridiculous thing. What's the Lord calling on your life? What's he saying to you? What's he drawing you into? It's crazy. Doesn't he know you're just you? He knows. But he knows who he is in you. Amen? Ask for the nations. This is bigger than stadiums. This is about the inheritance of Jesus. We are commanded to agree with these kinds of prayers. Psalm 2. Ask of me. 
and I will make the nations your inheritance and the ends of the earth your possession. This is the Father's uh, call to Jesus. Jesus has to step into this. Jesus, ask of me. Jesus has to step into it, and he does, and he has, and he will. Amen? Amen. All that is in God's heart will be accomplished. Let me tell you something about mandates. Whatever it is that you're calling in, it's never going to be thrown down to you. You're going to have to come up and take hold of it. That's right. That's right. Yeah? Yes. I know a lot of people in the church spend a lot of years, decade after decade, waiting for somebody to throw them a crumb. That's not what mandates are. Come on. Mandates are the directives of the heart of God, yeah. and he never throws them. They're passed like batons, yes. not thrown like crumbs. And to receive that baton, you need to come up here and take it. Amen. The scripture in Revelation chapter 10 of this very thing, John is caught, he's recording all of these prophetic things in the book of Revelation. And suddenly, he's caught up in the storyline. He's not just recording and scribing for all of us. He's caught up in the storyline. And he's, he's all of a sudden, he's what I want to, I want in on this thing. What's my role? This is, this is all future, but what's my role? That's the story of what's happening in Revelation 10. And the angel whose face is bright like a sun, I mean, he's standing on the water and the land. I mean, this is dramatic. And the angel says, you want this John? Come up and take it. He's holding this scroll. Yeah. He didn't throw it to John. Right. Oh, you want it? Here. No. John, you want it? Stand in your calling. Get up. Yeah. Get up. Stop being reluctant. Get up. Stand up and come get this thing. It dem- the, the calling, the mandate demands that you come up into who you really are. Do you yeah. see this? Yeah. It's an identity issue, not just a doing issue. Right. It's who you are. Yeah. It's who you are. Stop living so less, so far beneath who you really are. You are a son and a daughter and a desired one and a noticed one. You're not forsaken. You're not abandoned. You are loved. You are known. Come up here. Yeah. Is this stirring your heart up? That's what the angel is. Is this stirring you up? Well, how, how come you're doing this for those guys? That's what's happening in John's heart. What do you mean? Nations are going to respond to it. What's my role? All of a sudden, John's overcome with himself going, all this talk about what you're going to do, and I want to be a part. Yeah. Friends, that's what needs to happen in you. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be a part. That jealousy is unto righteousness. Don't you see it? Yeah. I want to come up here and take it then. Yeah. Step into it. It's yours for the taking. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You know what the word audacity means? The willingness to take bold risks. One of my favorite preachers, Greg Cook, says, faith is spelled R-I-S-K. It's true. It's risky. Might go bad. Could go bad. But God. Amen? Amen? It's time for you to be audacious. I'd love to see cutouts of you as you're running full speed into your calling. Taking out doors and windows and walls, just the cutout of Chris Bright, the cutout of Cedralyn. What happened there? Well, Cedralyn thought she was gonna go through there. Just left a little, that's cool. That's that's a glory statement, do you see that? We're so afraid of making mistakes, we won't step out into things we believe the Lord has called us. Friends, you've got to let that go. You have to let go of that so that you can step into the thing that God has for your life. It's one or the other. You cannot have both. You cannot walk in faith and fear. You're going to have to choose. And I'm provoking you and provoking myself to say today and for this day forward, I choose faith. I'm not going to walk in fear. I'm not going to walk in the reports of who it hasn't worked for. I'm going to walk in faith. And I'm asking for you to stir yourself up and say, me too. Me too. 
Some of you would go, well, I might be too old to start this kind of, no, you're not. Come on. Come on. No, you're not. Mm. Plenty of revivalists have gray hair. Amen. They do. Yep. I don't know what you're called to do, but I know that you know. I know that you have a sense. I know that when you hear it, you begin to resonate with that thing. And I also know, just as well as anyone else, what follows on the heels of that resonance. And I'm asking you to push that thing down and stop believing that voice that rises up against you. Stop. Trust the calling of God in your life, and you will see what you're meant to see. But you're going to have to step out. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And we are here as your cheering gallery. That's who you are to me. Yeah. I stepped out, and you guys go, that's awesome. That's why I keep coming back here week after week. <laughs> you encourage me to keep going in my race. Yeah. We want to do the same for you. What are you called to step into? Yes. I want to have the biggest prayer meeting, the most, I want to have a fiery prayer meeting, the most effective prayer meeting. What, I don't care what it is, whatever it is. You need to know it, and you need to begin to step out into that thing and trust. The confirmation will come around you. Amen? Amen? Let's wrap up with this one verse, Ephesians chapter 3. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. More than you can ask, more than you can think, this is our God. My challenge to you is I dare you to ask God something. Amen. That's the altar call. Yeah. I dare you. I double dog dare you. Seriously. I double dog dare you. Ask God. What is it that you want to see? What is it that he's saying to you? How can you agree? This is is the altar call. And this, when you begin to ask, you will see answers and you will be changed. Amen? This is the adventure you were born for. Nothing less than this. Amen? Amen? Amen. Stand to your feet. I'm going to pray for you. Father, I don't want to drag this out, but I just believe there's people here you're saying, I need, I need to step into something. I, I need to. It's for me. And I just want to make time for you, make prayer, make prayer time for you. If that's you, I just open the altar call up right here, right now to respond to this. I'm going to lay hands on you and believe that this is the season for you to step out and to trust God. That this is a safe place for you to step out and trust God. You're saying, that's me. I need this. I want to step out in this. I want to see God. Then we want to pray for you. And I also want to pray if there's anyone here and you're just not right with the Lord. You want to be. Maybe you've been in church for a lot of months. I don't know. But you're just not right with the Lord. I don't want you to leave believing that and thinking that. That is one. Co there is one conversation that needs to be had for you to be right. Amen? Amen. And so if there's anyone here and you're saying, that's me, I want you to just come up. We've got our prayer team here. We're going to pray for you in the next few minutes. And for those of the rest of you who are saying, this, I just, I, help me keep stepping out. I'm going to pray over you specifically. You can stay exactly where you are. Father, I just ask that this message would stir us out of comfort zones and out of lethargy and out of boredom. That God, together we would step into the faith that you've called us into. God, we pray into Paul Cain's word for 1989. We say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Nameless and faceless. Yes. Use us, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Do it in Orlando. Do it in Colorado. Do it all over. Do it. Do it. Do it, God. Yes. Do it, God. However it works, to nameless, faceless. We don't know even how to do that. Nameless and faceless. We just say yes to what you're doing, God, in the earth. We say yes to what you're doing in our city. Right. Jesus, yes, Jesus, Jesus, cause us to step out towards you with audacious faith. Cause us to come into the life that you've ordained for us, life and life abundantly. 
yeah. cause us to step into this kind of relationship that's living and active. It's on the edge. Jesus, thank you for the stories recorded for us in the scriptures. We thank you for these accounts. God, help us step into our own adventure in this season. In Jesus' name, amen.